eight. Six hours of countdown was performed on 7 May. On the morning of May 8, 1962, at 7.20 a.m., countdown was resumed. At 2.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Centaur Flight F-1 was launched from AMR Complex 36A. Rise-off was normal. All launch vehicle systems functioned satisfactorily. Atlas lifted the heaviest load in its history. The flight plan called for an 1,100-mile 1 suborbital trajectory to demonstrate ground support equipment, launch vehicle, and of the 509 telemetry measurements carried aloft, all but 11 returned usable data on Centaur Systems operation. Airborne television and liquid gas sensors provided excellent data until the failure and thus contributed new information on liquid hydrogen behavior.
seconds of full-scale firing has been accomplished. Integrity of the hydrogen-fueled engines has been proven in repeated tests. A test for factory. August of next year, future missions will be flown in this modified KC-135, which was assigned to the project in June. It's capable of achieving zero gravity conditions twice as long as the propeller-driven plane, a fact which will enable us to obtain more accurate information on the effects of zero gravity in the months ahead. Of zero-G flight. Using first a C-131B aircraft and later a KC-135, this team flew over 1,200 parabolic maneuvers, achieving zero-G durations of from 1 to 18 seconds. Early test capsules scaled down to represent the Centaur fuel tank contained liquid nitrogen. Later, approximately 200 maneuvers were flown with liquid hydrogen. High-speed motion picture cameras recorded a wealth of information on liquid distribution during weightlessness and the effects of external heat on hydrogen. These tests determined the amount of venting required to keep internal tank pressures at a minimum and formed a basis for development and proof of sensing equipment to reveal the position of liquid and gaseous hydrogen during flight. Conducted at the wind tunnel facility have a direct bearing on the F-3 flight. The object was to investigate Centaur's control margin and aerodynamic force limits during simulated flight. Phase one subjected nine configurations of a 1 35th scale Atlas Centaur to forces ranging from Mach 0.6 to Mach 4.4. Conclusion, Centaur's control margin, essentially its ability to maintain proper flight attitude, is greater than had been assumed through analytical predictions. Tests also revealed that loss of payload capability due to aerodynamic drag is less than had been assumed. Phase two testing attempted to establish whether bending moments due to aerodynamic forces would be greater than the vehicle could withstand. The two models used for this test phase were subjected to Mach numbers up to three at angles of attack which varied from plus nine degrees to minus nine degrees. Engineers completed the tests. However, results of the evaluation will not be available until the first quarter of 1963. Nitrogen was circulated through the fixture on which the panel was mounted to simulate Centaur's hydrogen shield tank walls. Helium gas purged between the panel and the mount prevented freezing. A one-ton steel shield designed specifically for this program protected the panel from shock waves at the beginning and end of the test runs. Operated hydraulically, it exposed the panel after the tunnel started and covered the panel before the test terminated. Compressed air ran through the tunnel at a velocity of Mach 3 for all tests in the series. Pressures on the panel were varied from 1,500 pounds per square foot to 5,000 pounds, and temperatures ranged from 300 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. The strength and stability characteristics of Centaur's insulation panels were confirmed under environments exceeding in severity those expected in flight. Centaur's separation system was redesigned from a mechanical latching to a shaped charge system. 1 July through 18 October, astronautics ran four complete separation tests in Point Loma D Tower, simulating as nearly as possible all flight conditions with the exception of the vacuum of space.
transmitted by the astronautics, autopilot, and sun-seeking equipment for vehicle orientation. To evaluate the ability of these combined components, astronautics engineers constructed a coast phase test stand at their Point Loma site. The bearing center of this three-ton simulator floats on a frictionless cushion of air and duplicates the motion of Centaur in space. Mounted on the stand, the control rockets, autopilot, and sun seekers prove their ability to orient Centaur in pitch, yaw, and roll. At a minimum tensile strength of 200,000 pounds per square inch. The 36-inch coupons are fusion butt welded samples overlaid with a spot weld doubler representing a specific weld area on the Centaur tank. Technicians cyclically stress these coupons a total of a thousand times in liquid hydrogen at 110,000 pounds per square inch. Quality verification labs repeat the mechanical property tests again before the major roll is released to fabrication and again on each gore skin and on every 80 feet of material used in tank fabrication. Virture of the Centaur tank and the hydraulic ram applies controlled hoop tension loads. Deflection gauges measure radial and circumferential displacement at design limit and ultimate loads. Data from the 12 specimens tested to destruction indicated a need for an increase in honeycomb core and skin thickness. In development, engineers improved resistant spot welds by sandwiching a thin film of nickel foil between sheets of 301 stainless before welding. The resultant nickel-enriched weld proved to be much stronger in both cross-tension and shear strength at liquid hydrogen temperature. They then subjected over 1,000 nickel-foiled weld samples to both shear and cross-tension tests at minus 423 degrees Fahrenheit. The accumulative evidence indicates we not only have a stronger weld, but also a high level of repeatable performance. The fatigue life of the nickel alloy weld is excellent. We fabricated test tanks with and without nickel foil under test brackets and tank seams. With foil, fatigue life was greatly improved. Firm the soundness of the fairings design. Each sample surpassed design requirements before it failed. Shear and fatigue tests are being conducted on sections of honeycomb materials both at ambient and cryogenic temperatures. A bulkhead fabricated of five inch thick honeycomb bonded to stainless steel shell. Astronautics Point Loma Laboratories, the panels were subjected to in-flight jettison tests to assure that they would separate from Centaur's ice-coated structure. Nose firing release was also duplicated under the actual gravity forces and dynamic air pressures expected in flight. And that the insulation panels which shield propellants from aerodynamic heating during early flight can be jettisoned from a coal tank. Initial attempts had failed because of insufficient spring force behind the test panel. Additional springs were added until the panels now jettison properly. Post-test information Astronautics, in cooperation with the Lewis Research Center, successfully separated test articles twice in the 50-foot diameter space power chamber, simulating a space altitude of 300,000 feet. The test constraint on ADC-2 called for at least one successful separation prior to launch. On the first attempt, the shaped charge arming device malfunctioned. 
the eight Atlas retro rockets fired, but the test specimens failed to separate. In the following two high-altitude tests, the shake charge cut the adapter satisfactorily, and at separation there were no evidences of interference between the adapter and the simulated Centaur vehicle. Our ground test program with engine hot firing and gimbling tests in their massive space chamber. 27 high volume vacuum pumps maintain the chamber at an altitude between 75. There were six successful 45 second runs. Primary test objectives were to determine the accuracy of thrust alignment and measure gimbal friction. And to program the trajectories of the support vehicles. Tracking system requirements are being established by personnel who developed the Zeus Unmark 1 and 2 and are now building the GlowTrack Global Tracking Network. The missile range was the center of intense AC-2 flight readiness preparations. Complex 36A updating is a major modification task affecting many key ground support systems, such as the umbilical boom, booster and some pod air conditioning, Centaur 6A and Atlas 116D, originally scheduled for Flight 2, were reassigned as test vehicles to demonstrate the launch readiness of the complex before the AC-2 test flight. AMR crews completed modification to the umbilical boom on 23 April. The following day, they erected test vehicle 6A. AC-2 will fly the heavy, non-jettisonable insulation panels. Flanges bolted together along the seams hold the panels firmly in place so they cannot lift off in flight. Work continued around the clock for preparing the vehicle for the tanking test. to Complex 36 Atlantic Missile Range were complete. The Atlas Booster and the Centaur Test Vehicle. <laughs>